So you're not completely crazy if you think of photosynthesis as being sort of the opposite of aerobic respiration. Because you know, here's aerobic respiration. Um, we take a glucose molecule, you know, which has a lot of energy in it because it has a lot of those energy-rich carbon-carbon bonds. And we break those bonds, and those carbons come off as low-energy carbon dioxide molecules. The energy that's released is used to drive this endergonic reaction of phosphorylating some ADP molecules into ATP molecules. And uh, we're going to uh, consume some oxygen in the process and produce some water. This diagram, by the way, you should think of as an unbalanced chemical equation because I didn't put the numbers on. And uh, photosynthesis is the opposite. And by opposite, I sort of mean that everything that goes into respiration is what comes out of photosynthesis. So what goes into aerobic respiration is glucose. So glucose is what photosynthesis produces. What does it produce it out of? Those low energy carbon dioxide molecules. Uh, so we take something low energy, we take those carbons and we shove them together into those high energy carbon carbon bonds to make the glucose. That requires energy. That energy has to be brought in. Um, it's going to come in in the form of light. and uh, along the way, we're going to end up consuming some water and producing some oxygen. So, you know, it's, it, they're, they're sort of opposites of each other. What goes into respiration is what comes out of photosynthesis. What comes out of respiration is what goes into photosynthesis. But this, this is the picture. You know, this is the big picture of photosynthesis. Understand this before you understand it in uh, greater detail. Uh, understand what goes in, what comes out, and be able to relate it to the standard um, chemical equation, the balanced equation representation of this process. You know, something like uh, six carbon dioxides um, and six waters um, and energy um, combined to produce the products, which are of sugar and some oxygens. You know, just, just be able to relate this diagram to this equation and sort of see that if I were to put the numbers in here, then, then they'd be sort of exactly the same. So if that's the big picture of photosynthesis, then the next step, of course, is the medium-sized picture of photosynthesis. And the medium-sized picture of photosynthesis consists of two parts. Um, they go by different names, but I'm going to call them the light reactions. and the carbon reactions. Uh, in the old days, people used to call the light reactions and carbon reactions, they used to call them the light reactions and the dark reactions. But then somebody pointed out, uh, it's not like the dark reactions have to happen in the dark. It's more that they can happen whether it's light or dark. Uh, so people started calling the dark reactions the light independent reactions and the light reactions they call the light dependent. So, so sometimes you hear people talk about light dependent reactions and light independent reactions. Um, I call them that too, but I don't have a lot of room on my piece of paper here, so I'm going to go, go by light reactions and carbon reactions, and you'll see why. It's, they're, they're actually really appropriate. The way that these two are related to each other is that the carbon reactions are the reactions that take carbon dioxide from the atmosphere in a process called carbon fixation. Um, so we take uh, carbon from the atmosphere in the form of CO2 and uh, shove those carbons together into those uh, energy-rich carbon-carbon bonds uh, to form a carbohydrate. Um, I'll just write glucose here, um, but uh, really depending on how you look at it, uh, it produces the precursor to glucose, uh, and, and you'll see that in more detail. This, of course, is an endergonic process. It requires a lot of energy because the, the CO2 is low energy, the glucose is high energy. Where does that energy come from? Well, it comes from ATP. So, so these reactions take ATP and use the energy in the ATP and produce ADP in the process. And also, it comes from another high energy molecule called NADPH. So they take NADPH and turn it into NADP, which is the low energy form of NADPH. Where does the ATP come from, and where does the NADPH come from? Well, they come from the light reactions. 
So the light reactions are all about taking ATP, ADP, taking ADP, the low energy ADP, and forming ATP um, through a process. Well, anytime you do that, it's called phosphorylation. So we're phosphorylating the ADP and turning it into ATP. Uh, the light reactions are also able to reduce the NADP and turn it into NADPH. Reduction means um, adding uh, an electron. So when the NADP has the extra electron, it becomes high energy. Those processes, the phosphorylation and the reduction, those are endergonic. So where does the energy come from? Well, it's called photosynthesis, so that's the hint. It comes from light. So the light reactions take energy from light and convert it into this chemical form that is turned the, uh, the, the chemical form of ATP and NADPH. Uh, by the way, the light reactions are also what um, consume the little bit of water and produce the little bit of oxygen. And so understand this medium-sized picture before you go on. Understand that the, 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 the synthesis part of photosynthesis, the making of the carbohydrates, the fixing of the carbon and, and making of the carbohydrates, that's the carbon reactions. The carbon reactions are powered by the ATP and the NADPH that are produced by the light reactions. So the light reactions kind of provide the energy that this thing needs to do the, the work of photosynthesis. I'll be covering the light reactions and the carbon reactions uh, separately in separate videos, but before you go on to the next video, which will be the light reactions, make sure that you understand this, this picture. You know, make sure that you can reproduce this diagram and explain it.